Hello, my name is Jeff Heaton. Welcome to class 14 of Introduction to Neural Networks. In this class session, I'm going to review with you my solution to Programming Assignment 2. Programming Assignment 2 was a neural network that you would train to see how many hidden layers you want to have and also how many hidden neurons on each of those layers. You assume that it can go up to two layers and you can put any number of neurons onto those lower, onto those hidden layers. We looked at how we would implement this in earlier class sessions when we looked at pruning. What I suggested you do in the homework assignment is to basically loop up through incrementally larger numbers of hidden neurons on the two layers and try one or two hidden layers and attempt to train it. Don't train it exhaustively like we would do for a regular assignment because it would take too long, but train it through maybe 500 iterations and see how well it's adapting to the training data provided with the given hidden layers that you are training it with. When I was running this program, I found that it was best to use one hidden layer and usually somewhere between 15 and 25 hidden neurons in that one layer. Your results may vary with this and we are running this against the forest cover data that we used in a earlier class assignment. So you were able to use a lot of the code from the midterm to implement program two. We're going to look at how I implemented this and what parts of my program I decided to create and how it was run. We begin by looking at the configuration information that I set up for this program. First, let's take a look at the configuration. Here's the configuration information that allows this program to run. It probably looks pretty similar to the midterm that we looked at because that is the program upon which this is based. However, there are some important differences between this configuration information and the configuration information that was used for the midterm. First, you see the file name. This is the cover data type from the U.S. Forestry Service that we are using to try to feed the neural network with enough information to predict forest cover type. This file is used for the hidden layer estimation program that we're doing here because it's going to use this real data to try to train the neural network to see how effective the neural network can be trained on this data for various hidden layer configurations. We use 1,000 elements for the training set size. Hidden layer 1 and hidden layer 2 specify that we're going to use 20 neurons, up to 20 neurons, for each of the two hidden layers. The more of these that you specify, the more times through the neural network must train because it is going to literally create a network from scratch and train it for each of these layers. So you've got 20 by 20, so it really needs to try out 20 times 20 times before it is actually done. The more of those you add, the longer it's going to run. The learning rate and momentum are typical backpropagation learning rate and momentum. The learning rate specifies how fast to learn. The momentum helps get past local minima that the program might encounter. True and false specifies the input values to represent true and false for the various pieces of input data that express themselves in a true or false way. The epoch specifies how long we should train for each one. We don't want to train too long because we're just trying to get a rough estimate of how each configuration works, and then the cover samples is how many samples of each cover type we should use in our training. We'll also look at the classes used. There's the Analyze class, which looks over the data and finds the minimums and maximums so that the data can be properly normalized for the neural network. This is exactly the same Analyze class as was presented for the neural network midterm, so we are not going to look at it again. Config, we just looked at. That contains the configuration information. Optimize is a completely new class that was added for this assignment. It loops over all of the configurations of hidden neurons that we may want to look at and finds the most optimal one. So the main body of the work done by the program is done here. Program 2 really just kind of ties everything together. It's the main entry point, so it allocates each of these classes and then executes them in the proper order. We'll see how this is done in a moment. Then there's also the train object, which is used to train each particular configuration of the neural network for this program. 
The main entry point for the program is shown here. First we create an analyze object. This is so that we only need one analyze object and once it has analyzed it is going to be able to be used by the other parts of this program that require information on the maximums and minimums of the data being passed in. We then go ahead and analyze. We call the analyze function and this analyzes the file name that's being specified. We then set up a training class which is going to be used over and over again for each neural configuration but we need to actually create it and we create it here. We build the training sets for the training object. This need only be done once because once we built the training sets we can try on different neural configurations and see how well they work. We create an optimized class which is the class that's going to actually run through all the combinations of hidden layer and then finally we call optimize which is going to return a optimal neural network and it will run through all of the configurations of hidden layers. We'll take a look at how the optimize function actually works. Notice that it loops from one through the numbers of hidden layers. It is trying on various hidden layers. Notice that we want at least one neuron in the first hidden layer. However, the second hidden layer is allowed to have zero neurons if need be because sometimes it's optimal to not have a second hidden layer. Then it's very repetitive. We just say that we are trying each of these configurations on for size and we create a feed forward neural network with the specified hidden layers. We attempt to train this neural network and see what the back propagation training was. If we've reached a new low as far as error is concerned, then we need to set the best network to the network that we just trained. We keep continuing with this process until we have gone through every configuration of hidden layers. This will allow us to then choose the one that, cho that resulted in the lowest training. This concludes class 14. In class 15, we're going to look to the future for new things that are being introduced to the field of neural network programming. We hope you will continue with class 15. Thank you. This course is based on our Introduction to Neural Network Programming books for Java and also Introduction to Neural Networks for C Sharp. Available in both paperback and ebook format.